Oftentimes, the architecture of a building does not follow a simple rectangular nor radial grid. A quick and easy way to handle these scenarios within Risa Floor is to import the building geometry and grid system as a DXF underlay. DXF files can be obtained by exporting from your Autodesk Revit or AutoCAD model. Once imported into Risa Floor, you can begin laying out the framing just as you normally would. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and start us with a blank Risa Floor model. We're going to go ahead and create our floor plan. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a label. We'll call it, actually, we'll just call it roof. This is going to be a single story structure there. Beam supported floor. We'll give it an elevation of 16 feet there. Consider that roof area load. And then we're going to actually utilize a composite deck in this scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and choose OK here. All right, now typically the first thing you do when you set up a floor within Risa Floor is set up your project grids. And so you've got the ability to set up uh, rectangular and radial grids. Uh, you can specify the, the labeling for your grid system. You can even specify arcs for your grid system. However, we're going to approach this a little bit differently today and we're actually going to utilize that DXF import feature. So I'm going to X out of our project grids here. So if I actually take a look at the geometry of my DXF file, I'll go ahead and switch over to my DXF file here. All right, so here in AutoCAD, we have, uh, you can see my file is up here saved as a DXF. You can see we've got a variety of radii that make up this polyline here. So this was laid out by the architecture to kind of create this wave feature on the side of the structure. So this is something that would be relatively difficult to set up uh, by specifying each individual radial uh, arc system within Risa Floor. It's much quicker and much easier if we just take this as a DXF file and import that into Risa and then we're already set up and we've saved ourselves a lot of time. So I've got my, my DXF file saved here. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to our Risa Floor model. All right, so here in Risa Floor, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the insert option and go to drawing grid. So we do have the option to just set up our own drawing grid within Risa Floor. You can choose a, draw, uh, a rectangular drawing grid or a radial drawing grid, similar to those project grid systems. You also have the option to save and recall grids. So if you ever think that you're going to have a project or perhaps multiple projects that follow that same grid system, you do have the option to save those as well. And then while I'm on the screen, I do always like to point out the construction line option. So within Risa Floor, you do have an option to utilize construction lines where they're more temporary as you're modeling and you realize you might need an offset perhaps. You can always come into that insert drawing grids option to be able to model and draw those construction lines as you're progressing through. But we're not going to utilize this drawing grid option here today. We're going to switch over to this import DXF tab. So I'm going to switch over to import DXF. We've got the option to specify the origin for this DXF file. We're going to go and just leave it at 00. zero. And then some of our DXF import options include the ability to modify that scale. Um, and then we want to make sure we specify the unit. So the units that I set up my DXF file in was in inches. So we'll go ahead and make sure that that's set to inches as well as that DXF plane. So when modeling in AutoCAD, that plane is the XY plane. So I just want to make sure that that's consistent here. And then this angle increment. So this angle increment value, if you recall, we had a lot of curves along the length of our polyline there. So uh, that angle increment is going to allow us to snap two points at five degree increments along the length of each arc or circle. So that polyline was made up of a variety of circles with uh, different radii. So that angle increment is going to be specific to each of those arcs and circles. Uh, but nevertheless, that's going to allow us to snap to points along the length of that, which you'll see why we'll need that here in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the, the DXF file to import here. I went ahead and I just saved it to my desktop. So we'll go ahead and select our import. Here we actually do have the option. If you've got a, a huge DXF file and you only need to import some of the layers, you do have an option to select a few of the layers rather than all of them. You do also have the option, if I select this uh, gray box here, you can change the color if you need to differentiate between the different lines within the DXF file that you're importing. So you do have that option available to you. I'm going to go ahead and just choose cancel, select done. There we have it. We've already got our grid line system already set up. 
So there was very minimal effort on our end and being able to model this grid system. We basically just took it right from architecture, plopped it into our model, and now we can go ahead and begin drawing columns just as we normally would. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up here to my column and I'm just going to go ahead and just import some standard wide flange gravity columns. I can change the framing to lateral, maybe rotate them later if I need to. But if I zoom in here, we can see we've got some uh, rectangular grids as well as our curved grid. So we know in general we're probably going to want to stick a column maybe at our intersections where our curve intersects our rectangular grids. And then we'll come over here and it looks like our rectangular grid doesn't perfectly align with our curve. So maybe we'll want to stick a column in line with our horizontal grid there. But as you could see, this column and this column, I'm not going to want to necessarily frame a straight member to it. Perhaps I could and then maybe cantilever out to accommodate this edge. Or as you can see, if I hover my pencil over the, the length of this curve here, you can see that I've got a few different options and snap points available to me to be able to add additional columns along the length of this curve. And that's that five degree increment that I was talking about when we initially set this up. So I can go ahead and just choose a few options along the length here of my curve. So it's really gonna allow me to accommodate that curve a little bit more easily. Um, so then you even, if you wanted to, we could probably change these to either HSS members, maybe they're round or rectangular, to really kind of even that out. And they'd be a lot smaller if we're going to end up having a lot more columns close together like that. But in general, you then do have the option to obviously just box around and start modeling some columns like you normally would. Obviously, you'd want to include some at grid intersections. Perhaps in some instances, maybe you can a lever out. So that's a really quick way you can accommodate complex building geometry within Risa Floor. For more information, visit Risa.com.